The predetermined nature of wrestling means that talent only have so much control in what happens. Wrestlers will often have to do angles, storylines, matches, or spots they don't want to. This promo also had a line regarding my actual friend who's going through actual leukemia that Vince wanted me to say, that he tried to talk me into saying, this is where I, I absolutely drew the line. Like I was like, absolutely not. Today, we're covering those moments where performers either went through with the act anyway or outright refused. I don't care who you are, what you do. You'll never get me to do that. I can honestly say he never got me to do a take a Rooney. You didn't want to do the Stardust thing. So what happened? You ran away. As we list 10 things wrestlers didn't want to do. When it comes to a move wrestlers didn't want to be on the receiving end of, the stink phase is right at the top of the list. Who had the biggest problem with taking the stink phase? I think it was a lot of the guys, man. But they knew that like, if Vince McMahon was going to take it. When the likes of The Rock, Stephanie, and even Vince McMahon were taking it, then there's not much anyone could say. He owns this company! Yeah! Our Lucifer's lips are the biggest hearts in the WWE! Thank God! Can't do this! How humiliating! Oh my God! Oh, the stink face! Stephanie's head was right up his big butt! No one took more stink faces than Kurt Angle. In fact, Angle received the move so frequently, you could almost believe Kurt was requesting to take it. In reality, Angle was a team player, willing to do whatever it took to be entertaining, something Rikishi may have taken advantage of when he played a cruel rib on the Olympic gold medalist in 2000. Beforehand, he had to go to the bathroom and relieve himself. It was number two. <laughs> and he decided not to wipe himself. He got me in the stink face and spread <laughs> his cheeks and <laughs> rubbed his butt in my face and it stuck so bad. Another poo-related rib that featured an unwilling participant occurred after Vince McMahon shorted his pants when trying to fart in Gerald Briscoe's face backstage. It was an attempt to make Briscoe puke since Gerald was known to have a weak stomach. Vince ended up going out for his promo with shorted pants. Then when McMahon returned backstage, he said to have changed clothes before grabbing the soiled briefs and chasing Briscoe with them in hand. Triple H got hold of Briscoe, but Gerald Gerald escaped the game's grasp with an amateur wrestling hole. Going back to the stink phase and how Rikishi was known for having a dirty thong he never washed. You got different thongs, man. When I don't like a person, I take the thong that I never take out the bag. But my ass is always clean. It was used only when necessary and one such example may have been when Lita was forced to take the stink phase. This was a legit punishment issue by Vince because Lita refused to kiss boyfriend Matt Hardy on SmackDown in 2001. Lay it on him! Give it up! Wow! Oh my god, what's this? Good grief! This wasn't the only time Lita was against taking part in an angle, as at the end of 2001, both she and Jeff Hardy refused to kiss. During a storyline where Matt and Jeff were feuding with Lita, caught in the middle of it. You're not listening to head up! The higher ups tried to convince Jeff, but he, Matt, and Lita were all completely against the kiss happening. The segment instead featured a hug. The feud came to an end after a subpar pay per view match. Following this, the Hardys and Lita were taken off TV before returning as a trio a short time later. Lita was put in an even worse position five years later when she and Edge were made to do a live sex celebration on Raw. Oh my gosh! Mind you, ladies and gentlemen, this is live. Anything can happen. This was after Edge won the WWE Championship at New Year's Revolution. Neither Edge or Lita wanted to celebrate the title win in such a way, but the higher-ups felt getting it on in the ring fit perfectly with the couple's characters at the time. That was brought to me. I was like, ah, really don't want to do that, yeah. but... Here we are. The segment drew a massive 5.2 quarter rating, but it's hard to look back at it in the same way when you consider that Lisa was told she would be fired if she didn't go through with it. She was backed up by Edge and John Cena. However, Vince wasn't going to budge despite Lita's discomfort. How about I'm not actually naked? Nope, nope, it's not going to work unless you're completely naked under there. That's just the only way it's going to work. The angle was a catalyst for Lita leaving the company later in the year, where she was brutally embarrassed on the way out. Oh my God. I don't know if that's 
the first time that Lita's been hit in the face with sausage. No, please, please. It's moving. No, no, no. It's How vibrating. How did you find that? How did you Lita. find that? Instead of quitting because of a storyline, our next example saw wrestler fired for not wanting to take part in an angle. WCW Senior Vice President Eric Bischoff fired Disco Inferno after Disco refused to work and ultimately lose a match with Jacqueline. Every single person I talked to, Paige, Terry Taylor, every said, don't do it. And I said, so I went to Eric one day and I said, hey, can't do it. And he goes, okay, you're fired. And to have a good solid bid roster talent say no, uh, I won't do that. That didn't work for me, brother. Disco was not hired back unless he agreed to put Jackie over. Upon resigning Disco, Booker Terry Taylor made sure to put the TV title on him, thinking there was no way Disco would have to do the job to Jacqueline now he was a champion. However, Eric was adamant on Disco losing. I couldn't understand why a comedic character couldn't see the fun to be had by going out there and having a match with, with Jacqueline. The match took place at Halloween Havoc 1997 and featured a lot of stalling before Jacqueline proceeded to have her way with Disco in a squash that went longer than it needed to. Stone Cold Steve Austin was another wrestler whose refusal to wrestle a match led to his departure. After the Rattlesnake took his ball and went home after learning the plan was to have him lose to Brock Lesnar in an unadvertised match on television. Vince would like to see Brock Lesnar go over on me in a King of the Ring qualifier match. You're not gonna do a one or two or three week build for this match and get a number out of it? I told Jim, I said, well, if that's gonna be creative, I said, I won't be at Monday Night Raw. This wasn't the only time Stone Cold turned down bad creative, as Austin was set to compete at Taboo Tuesday 2005 against Jonathan Coachman of all people. This after Steve had stunned the entire McMahon family. That right. Ah! Oh, no, no! Oh, no! Which led to the McMahons firing Austin's good friend, Jim Ross. The coach ended up taking Jim's place as both he and Vince continuously mocked JR and the rattlesnake. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold Coachman said so. If Steve defeated Coachman at the pay-per-view, then JR would get his job back. However, once Stone Cold learned that Coach would be going over, Austin backed out of the show, saying that he hurt his back moving furniture as an excuse not to attend. Coachman would later say that the Rattlesnake no-showed because Austin believed he was above wrestling a match versus an announcer. Austin was involved in some sort of accident over this past weekend. Austin will certainly not be a taboo Tuesday. And it's safe to say Steve was right. Batista was drafted in as a replacement while the JR getting his job back stipulation was dropped. JR was no stranger to being pitched in crappy angles. Unfortunately, he wasn't in a position like Steve where he could turn stuff down. This meant that Jim was routinely featured in matches and segments he didn't want to be in. I was involved in a lot of matches, but none that I wanted to be in, but the minute by minutes ratings kill me. It's like watching NASCAR. They're watching for a train wreck. As Vince McMahon seemed to get a kick out of embarrassing and making fun of Ross. To ingratiate themselves with the, the chairman, they came. They kept coming up with ideas to embarrass and humiliate the TV persona of Jim Ross. The WWE took advantage of how over JR was by constantly getting heat on him, especially whenever television took place in Jim's hometown of Oklahoma. You're not a Hall of Famer. You're a joke. You're an embarrassment. You're not a man. JR, you're fired. Oh, what? I think we should play the trumpets. Woo! One that, that took me by surprise the most was John Laurinaitis comes out and re relieves me of my duties. You hadn't been told? No. And it wasn't, even on the, it wasn't even on the format. Ross didn't like the fact he took TV time away from the talent and felt that any time he was put in the ring or beaten up, it was done as a hotshot angle to get cheap heat. No! No! Oh no, my God! Aaron oh. Bishop! Hey. Great. You know as well as I do, as well as everybody here in Madison Square Garden, that Jim Ross... I want you to kiss my feet right now. Get down there and kiss it. As much as JR didn't want to go through with the angles he did, he rarely turned anything down. Unlike Mick Foley, who famously declined the opportunity to wrestle Vince McMahon at WrestleMania 17. I, I, I could have easily come back and it would have been a big match and it would have been a good money match. The build began in December 2000, and prior to Mick being fired by Vince on the Christmas edition of Raw, a video was recorded with Foley signing a stack of contracts with Linda McMahon. Life as you know it 
is about to change. <laughs> Have a great show. It wasn't specified what the contracts were for. All that we were told in the video was that it meant Mick was able to appear in the WWF in some form even if he was fired. The tape aired on the Go Home Show for WrestleMania 17, where it set up Mick to appear as the special referee for Shane McMahon versus Vince, a match Foley had originally been asked to appear in as Vince's opponent instead. It's possible the contract was supposed to pave the way for Mick to wrestle Vince, but the details were kept vague in case things didn't go ahead. Foley would have been game for the match at any other time. However, given the hardcore legend had only been retired for a year, Mick was still in the belief that he would never wrestle again. And I did not want to have that match with Vince because I could have sworn I was really retired. However, when you consider the fact that Foley ended up coming out of retirement and wrestling for another eight years, you can see why Mick regrets turning down the Vince match. Next, we have a wrestler who regretted a spot in a match that he was forced into doing. We're talking about when Sid and Jeff Jarrett challenged Scott Steiner for the WCW title in what was initially a three-way at Sin 2001. Sid was known for his crazy character work as opposed to ever climbing the turnbuckle. Oh my god! What happened to my car? Go back! Go back! Space 22, man. 22. 22! Oh man! Why me? Why me? Why? So it surprised fans when Sid leaped from the second rope at the end of his match at Sin. Sid, who had recently returned from a shoulder injury, was totally against performing the spot, but WCW officials insisted he go through with it. But it was um, something I, would, I didn't want to do, something I wasn't comfortable doing. I'm not somebody flying off the top rope. Sid endured a brutal landing, snapping both the tibia and fibula. The wrestlers still tried to work spots with Sid before Steiner eventually pinned him to end the match. I came to him through the day and said, I just don't feel comfortable with that. And so they, they just wouldn't bend. I think I came down at an angle. And when I came in at that angle, it was just enough to snap that part of the leg. Sid never wrestled regularly at a high level again following the injury. He later sued WCW for the incident and its aftermath, but the case was dismissed. Sid's leg break spot will live forever online as one of wrestling's most gruesome injuries. Much like the Kurt Angle segment where he stated what he wanted to do with Charmel will go down as one of wrestling's most gruesome promos. Booker. I want to have sex with your wife. Bestiality sex. Angle wanted nothing to do with a bestiality comment or the entire stalking Charmel storyline in general. This was another case where Vince McMahon wanted to create outrageous television. Despite being uncomfortable with the angle, Kurt was incredibly entertaining throughout. Proof that no matter what angle was given, he was going to make it work. It was the worst angle I've ever done. Worst storyline I've ever done. I did it anyway because I've always been a team player, but I was not comfortable. Kurt was on form even during a storyline he didn't want to do. So imagine how great the Olympic gold medalist was when he became the wrestling machine after jumping to SmackDown in early 2006, where he won the world title off the bat. This was Kurt at his most intense and fierce. Gone was the comedy, Angle was now more predatorial in the ring as the unleashed straight shooting ass kicker. It was one of the best runs of his entire career and it all came about due to Shawn Michaels turning down the chance to move to SmackDown. The blue brand needed a new top star after Batista had to relinquish the world championship due to Injury. You know, having to walk away and surrender the title. Heartbreak. Michaels, much like Triple H in 2004, had no intention of working Tuesdays. The only reason you are WWE champion for a year is because Triple H didn't want to work Tuesday. In Sean's case, he couldn't attend SmackDown tapings on Tuesday since it would interfere with Bible study time with his wife. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out a similar video on 10 dark moments that WWE want you to forget. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.